Right, so let's look at what happens when we mix ideal gases. So the basic idea here is, let me draw a little, a little diagram. Remember, these diagrams are qualitative. They don't really mean exactly that. So let's say you had some chamber, a box or a balloon or whatever. And in that chamber, you had three gases. You had hydrogen gas. You had nitrogen gas. N2. And you had some oxygen. And you can see all of them are in some sort of ratio. Like the one is a bit less, the other one's a bit more. They're not equal in any way. Then Dalton's law of partial pressure says the individual pressure of hydrogen plus the individual pressure of nitrogen plus the individual pressure of oxygen will equal the total pressure that we measure of the box, the balloon, or whatever. So whatever we measure that pressure of that thing, it will be the sum of the individual pressures of the nitrogen. Now, of course, things aren't distributed in this balloon or box as I drew it here. It's not like all the nitrogen is in one corner and all the hydrogen is in the other corner and the oxygen. Um, because of entropy, they'll um, they'll actually, actually mix. So if you think about the balloon idea... Maybe a better way to draw it would be those, I mean, those are all the nitrogen, those are all the oxygen, and those are all the hydrogen. So they're all throughout the balloon. And that's why they have a partial pressure, because there's only a certain amount of them in the total balloon, but they're all in the same volume. So that pressure of theirs is unique. They're all at the same temperature, same volume. So... V equals same for all, and T equals same for all, right? Because all the nitrogen is in the entire balloon. All the hydrogen is in the entire balloon. All the oxygen is in the entire balloon. It's not like just in little corners and its volume is less. Um, the only thing that's different is the number of moles is not the same, right? And that's then where the, the change comes in. They will have different pressures individually. So what can we do with that information? Right. So if we have the total pressure, which we just said is equal to, so let me just use general terms, PA plus PB plus PC. How do we calculate pressure? Well, we can use the ideal gas law. So pressure is equal to NRT over V. But what would we just say is equal of all of them? The temperature and the volume. The only thing that is unique is the number of moles. So we can write something that says the pressure of A, we only need the, to specify the number of mole and the pressure. So PA is equal to NA, and then RT and V are the same for all of the gases. So if we have this expression here, we can write PA as NA multiplied by RT over V. And NB times RT over V. And NC times RT over V. Right, Because temperature and volume are the same for all the gases. It's not like the temperature is going to be higher and for one of them, whatever, because they're all in the same balloon, same conditions. <clears throat> the only thing that differs is how much of them they are. So rewriting this equation, we can take out the RTV because it's common in all of the expressions. And then we're left with the sum of this times RT over V. And what would you call the sum of all the amounts, all of the number of moles? It's the total mole of gas. So if we call the combination in total gas, then it must be the total number of moles present. So that's the idea that we're working with here. So there's something that is a total. They have their own individual amounts and they have the same temperature and volume. And then we can calculate the total pressure by taking the total amount of moles 
and multiplying that with RT over V. Now, something that we can relate to one another is something we call the mole fraction. So the mole fraction means if we have our little chamber and there are three mole nitrogen, there's one mole hydrogen, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six mole of oxygen. What is their fraction that they have? So what is the fraction of oxygen in this case? Well, it's in total, so it's there's six oxygens, but how much gas is there? There's six oxygens plus the three nitrogens plus the one hydrogen. So in principle, it is 0 0.6, or you can think of it as 60% of the gas is oxygen. And that's what a mole fraction indicates to you. It indicates what is the fraction of molecules or gas in the system corresponding to that species. So, as I had here, we calculate, oops, we calculate the mole fraction by taking the amount. So, in that case, I just took the molecules, but in this case, we, do, we use the, the number of moles. So, Na over the sum of all of the gas. And that, of course, we call Na plus Nb plus Nc, we call that in total. We can then rewrite that to be N total equals to number of moles divided by the things mole ratio. So that's just a rewriting of this equation that will be useful just now. So we can rewrite N total as Na over the mole fraction of A. Then it means we can write P total as Na over the mole fraction of A. Still multiplied by R, the same temperature and volume. So by some rewriting, we get the mole fraction of A multiplied by the total pressure is equal to NART over V. And doesn't that look familiar? Because what is NA? RT over V. It's the partial pressure of that species. So in other words, to get the partial pressure of the species, we take the total pressure and we multiply it by the fraction that that ga gas makes up in it. So in other words, if the total pressure of this thing is 100 atmosphere and oxygen contributes 60% of the molecules in the system, it means its partial pressure will be 60% of the total pressure. I mean, that makes sense. It's like a vote. I mean, it has 60% um, rule in the company. So in other words, its partial vote means 60% of whatever the total vote is. Right, so... Like we say here, in other words, the partial pressure of the gas is directly related to the fraction of particles of that gas in the mixture. Right. And we'll see how useful that is to do some calculations um, later on. But I hope this, this idea, especially this little part here, helped you understand uh, what the picture looks like. And especially this one. Why is the temperature and the volume the same, but not the number of moles? So the amount, not the same. Okay. So thank you for watching. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video.